differentiators and, and, and so forth. Go ahead. So vulnerability management as a service, very interesting. Um, how comfortable are people with the idea that all of their vulnerabilities are out there in the cloud and could be, you know, discovered? Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course, the answer is extremely comfortable, but no. So there's, there's a couple of ways that we, we solve this. Um, obviously, um, we connect into many software as a service providers as well. So we mentioned Qualys before, White Hat. Uh, a lot of these other organizations, they already have their data out in the cloud, so that makes it very easy for us. But there are cases where that's not the case as well. And we uh, do a couple of different things. One is we eat our own dog food, uh, meaning we're using Conduit to uh, establish all of our vulnerability management and, and manage that, and we expose that to all of our customers so they see exactly how we're doing. We're completely transparent about that. But we also offer, and it was not up here on our three subscription uh, plans up here, but we also, also offer an on-site uh, virtual appliance for them as well so that we can tap into that, but all of their data remains within their four walls. I just figured they'd encrypt it with Cypher Cloud that we saw earlier. <laughs> <laughs> encrypt it with Cypher Cloud, yeah, move our data in between right. the yeah, um, cloud passage. Yeah, there, uh, yeah, obviously, a very interesting uh, value proposition that that whole concept of correlating security events. Um, can you kind of talk about the correlation process? Um, most correlation engines go through a learning process. You know, what's involved with that? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a couple of things. And, and it is, it's probably the most difficult part of, of the technology, right. right? And it's, it's like I said, we're, we're dealing with a messy data problem. Every one of these products, they, they do it in a different way or describe this stuff in a different way. So we do it because of the, one of the things that we do is we discovered almost, uh, I don't want to say by accident, but it was almost secondary, is all of these different various tools that are doing all of these network scans and application scans and database scans and so on, they have a whole lot of information about your assets as well, right? So we, are, we end up storing all of your asset data in what's known as a CPE format, which is the common platform enumeration, which describes the full stack of, of your particular asset. So the server, the OS, what language it's in, all of the various, you know, it's a service, service packs that are sitting on it or whatever, and the entire configuration and all the applications and everything that sit on that. So we can use a lot of that data uh, to, to use as, a, as like a source for what, what the vulnerabilities are sitting on top of, right? And then we also allow you to, to do uh, asset tagging. So we, we give you the ability to apply metadata to all of these assets as well so that you can search, sort, and prioritize all of that. But that also helps in our correlation effects as well. Um, and then you sit on top of that, we've, we've got data sources. We're syncing with the National Vulnerability Database, right? So if we see something like a CVE ID, that, that makes a no-brainer. We know exactly what that description is, and we know exactly what this vulnerability is. Um, or we sync up with uh, the Open uh, Vulnerability Database as well, which has another set of uh, databases. So if we can start to find all of these different sources and say, oh, yeah, that's this vulnerability, right? And then we stack it on top of that asset. When four different other scanners find that, uh, sitting on that exact same asset, and that asset in our system could be a, a server, it could be a host name, it could be an IP address, it could be a database instance name, it could be a URL if it's a web application. Right, because I think the value is I don't want those 1,000 alerts coming to me, exactly. I want those 1,000 alerts coming as, as one. Exactly, right. I, exactly, and it was a problem that we, uh, right. to bring up my, my experience at Orbitz, we saw all the time, right? right? So we've got all of these tools and they're scanning our networks, and there's plenty of overlap when you have that many networks. Um, that it's like, I, I, I got to sit there and sort through all these spreadsheets, or my team does, and figure out what the heck is what, because you're actually tracking this same vulnerability seven times. And the last thing you want to do is dump that into a bug tracker or a change management system or something. You know, once you, I mean, it sounds like one of the values of your system is really dedupe, so you can create signal out of, you know, raw information. Right. But I guess I, the follow up question I would have is, uh, you know, what's the scale of the Redux? sort of vulnerability signal that you get? Is it, are you just still talking about typically for a user there will be, you know, thousands and thousands of, of instances of, a, of an asset with a particular vulnerability where it's possible to do remediation or do you boil it down to a small set of things? I'm just wondering what the scale is of the output that um, you get from the system. Okay, so uh, hopefully I'm answering your question right, and if, if not, just stop me and I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase. Um, so what's, what we're doing is, and, and it, it can be in terms of 
the dedupe effort. It can be thousands of uh, duplicates, duplicates, depending on the size of the organiz organization and, and the way the data is structured. So a common problem that we see with our customers is they've got vulnerability scanners coming in externally. Maybe they've got a PCI auditor mm -hmm. or something that's coming in externally, and they're doing their own internal scans. Right? And they're coming back and they're looking at this, I've got this vulnerability and this vulnerability. And they look different because I've got an internal IP address and I've got an external IP address, but there's really a VIP and there's you know, a bunch of different servers sitting behind that. It's really one vulnerability that I want to fix one time, push it out through a patch management system and be done with it. Right? So we, uh, the scale of us deduping that could be in the, in the range of tens of thousands, if not more, all the way down to a single one and say, here, you need to push this patch. And here's the list of assets, by the way, below it. And we can tie that, the assets together, meaning if it's an external asset or an external IP and an internal IP and it's actually the same exact asset, we know that too. Are you finding a lot of customer or a lot of users who, um, who have the systems and processes in place, especially when you get to the mid and the low end range of the customer base where they're actually that uh, systematic and they're kind of predictive security maintenance? Or? Sure. So we acknowledge that this is phase two of the problem, really. Uh, phase one is, is probably a lot of the, the SMB market is experiencing now, which is where are all my vulnerabilities, right? Uh, phase two is what I was experiencing at Orbitz with some of the larger financial services, healthcare, uh, retail, any of the regulated uh, uh, markets are, are have already experienced now, which is I know where they all are. They're everywhere, and they're pervasive, and how the heck do I fix all this stuff, basically? So. Uh, our target market is, tends to be in those, those areas, and they range in size. One of the things that we did discover through our beta program uh, was that there was a whole class of, of organizations that we never even thought of when we started building this out, and that's on the professional services side. So these guys that are doing the penetration testing services and security assessments, they use the front half of our tool to combine all this data and deliver a nice report. And the key is you guys aren't doing any vulnerability testing. You're doing vulnerability management. Exa right? Exactly. We, we are Switzerland in the process and completely agnostic. We do not rip and replace any of the tools that you're already using. How about on the performance side? A lot of data going, going out lot, of the organization. It's, it's a lot of data, and it's mess. The, the problem isn't so much the size of the data. Again, it's the messiness right. of the data, which means we got a lot of processing that needs to happen. Uh, we farm all of that processing off, off of the main application, so it's running in the background, and things pop in as, as we process them. But it's not, we don't have the same issue as if you were like a, a SIM provider, like a, a security information and event management, where you're looking at logs because those, that market is basically telling you, I am being attacked okay. right now. We're trying to address the root cause problem. So it's, the performance concerns are, are different. Great. They gave me this sign. I don't know if you want me to kill him. Is that <laughs> <coughs> Thank you. Good job. <laughs>